Hello everybody. I've had some of these 1103 size motors around for a while now and uh, finally getting around to putting them together into a build. So I thought I'd do some thrust testing just to get an idea of uh, what speed motor and size and design propeller I should use to uh, maximize the thrust and performance of this build. This will also help me uh, determine what frame size I want to use for this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the testing setup and then some of the results. Okay, and just to get an idea, you can see that we're working with uh, about three and a quarter grams. We had uh, another gram or gram and a half for an ESC, and we're still you know, easily under five grams. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly go over the test setup here. I have a motor mounted up with a propeller on it, and that's positioned over a thrust stand. And off screen, this is driven by a uh, Racer Star 6 amp ESC, and I have a Pico BLX flight controller hooked up to a PC. And I have a macro written which uh, drives the motor output to three set points pretty much the third, three quarter, or a third, two thirds, and full throttle. Uh, and then on the electrical side, there's a power supply off screen, and the hot wire here is running through a DC current meter. And that's measuring the current going into the flight controller. So anything that the flight controller is taking is going to be included in the, the measurements. So they might be, you know, a tenth high. Nothing significant, though. Then the voltmeter over here is connected directly to the flight controller as well. So we're not actually measuring the voltage at the motor. Um, but we're at least going to get a good idea of what the flight controller is seeing. And then you can kind of estimate what the motor is seeing at full throttle. And that pretty much covers it. So now I'm going to go through and just show an example of a quick test and then uh, show some of the numbers. 10,000 kV 1103 motor with 65 millimeter FPV racer props. Now that I've gone over the test setup, I'm going to get into some of the results that I was seeing. See, I tested uh, three different motors. I also included a brushed 0820, which we'll get into at the end. Um, three different uh, speed 1103 motors and quite a range of propellers here that I have off to the side. Now going into this, pretty much had heard that the 10,000 kV motors running on the 66 millimeter propellers are, you know, it's pretty similar to the uh, original Parrot props, the ones that I have here. Um, these are rumored to warm the motors up pretty good. So I pretty much was going to, I measured the, that first and then was going to go from there trying to make sure I didn't pull much more current than I was seeing with the 66 millimeter FPV racer on the 10,000 kV motor. So I ran that first. You can see here that I uh, got almost 120 grams of thrust at the full throttle which in my opinion is pretty impressive, especially when you consider the weight of the motors and some of the numbers that are published on Banggood's page. I think they only have about like 60 grams, so we're almost doubling that here. And uh, if this works out, it's probably going to yield a pretty impressive build. Um, and I also heard that some folks were running cut down 3025s, so I had one trimmed to 58 millimeters. You can see that uh, pulled almost 7 amps, so it's probably getting risky on the uh, the current draw there. And uh, the thrust dropped down to just over 100, so if you can handle the the swing room to, to, to cover the 66 millimeter, it's going to be a more efficient and powerful build. Uh, and then the next thing I tried was one of these tri-blades. I see these on a lot of builds, and this did not go so well started pulling almost six amps at only about 60 grams of thrust where one of the blades on the propeller just ripped off and uh, almost ruined my test setup so this is one this is not the one from the test I actually ended up tossing that away and probably will throw the rest of these away uh, not something I'm gonna recommend based on this testing maybe other folks are having better results but uh, I'm not gonna be doing much with them myself okay and uh, everything else that I have, I pretty much assume is going to be pulling more current. Uh, I didn't really want to drop down into like 56 millimeter propellers like Hubson or anything because I know the thrust is just going to drop down. 
I'm looking to maximize that here. So for the 8,000 kV, uh, I, I I went with a wider range because they're they're going to be pulling a little bit less. So I started with a 66 millimeter FPV racer. You can see we lost oh, roughly 20% of the thrust, but the current dropped down quite a bit, and the estimated grams per wattage. And keep in mind this is uh, this is based on the flight controller voltage. The motor's probably seeing a little bit less. So the wattage would be a little bit lower. So this estimation is probably a little low, but since we ran everything through the same test setup, it's probably okay to at least uh, do some rough comparisons here. Uh, anyway, so we got quite a bit higher uh, efficiency on this setup. So, cause we're only pulling four grams of thrust and we're getting about a hundred. So if you wanted to increase the, the efficiency and you weren't looking to maximize thrust, this probably wouldn't be too bad of a setup. Um, and then the next thing I tried was a 30-25 cut down to 62 millimeters. See that we pulled more current and uh, we got a little bit less thrust. So yeah, unless you really needed to make things smaller, you couldn't swing the 66 millimeters again. I would opt for that combo. Uh, and then we get down to a 30-25 cut to 66 millimeter. Yeah, the thrust increased. So did the current draw. Um, I mean, if you're going to run 66 millimeter, I don't know why you would bother with a 30-25. But based on these results, anyway, you're getting about the same thrust, but it's pulling uh, an amp more, and it's the same size propeller. And then um, I also just to see how high we could get this uh, in terms of thrust. I ran all the way a 70 and a full 30-25. And you know, we got up a little bit more thrust. We pushed a little over 100, 105, and the current draw pulled up into the oh, the six amp range. So um, again, you know, probably if you're looking to maximize thrust, the original combo that I tested on the 10,000 kV with the 66 millimeter FPV racer prop is the best. And if I was gonna run these 1103s, I'd personally be running the FPV racer as well. Um, Beyond the 3025s, also tried some of these Rotor X 3020s. Um, there wasn't anything too impressive or anything to write home about there. The results are there. I'm not going to get into them too much. Um, and the next thing, I have one of these 66 millimeter tri blades. And from what I can tell, these are essentially the same as the 66 millimeter FPV racer, but with a third blade. You can see. Um, and I didn't run them on the 10,000 kV because I figured they were going to pull more current and I didn't want to overload the motor. But then, see, even on the 8,000 kV, we only got 91 grams of thrust, so it's dropping off from the 66 millimeter FPV racer and it's pulling even more current. So, see, no reason why you would want to use those over a, a two bladed 66 millimeter prop. Uh, then I also tried one of these 2035 quad blades and. Um, you know, we lost about 25% of the thrust compared to uh, a 66 millimeter. It is smaller, but the uh, current draw was pretty high, and the efficiency was one of the worst I've seen uh, across this test. Uh, it's pretty low, pretty much what you would expect. But if you want to want to have a real small build and you're not concerned with maximizing thrust, it's something to consider. Um, and then lastly, I did run a couple tests on the 6500 kV motor. Um, I started right out with a full 3025 because I noticed with no, I knew with the, the uh, slower speed that uh, wasn't going to be thrusting as much and the current draw wasn't going to be uh, anything too crazy. So we got uh, 91 grams of thrust and we were only pulling, uh, we were still under 5 amps with a full uh, 3025. So that's pretty good if you're looking to maximize efficiency and you were able to run a full three inch prop, that would probably be the best combo. Um, but again, it's not the most powerful for sure. Um, then I also, just to see if we could push them a little more, I tried a HQ3030. And uh, I think that was starting to overload the motor. Maybe those propellers just aren't quite as efficient. And we lost uh, another 15 grams of thrust, and the current draw went up. So that's certainly something I wouldn't recommend. And then I also tested one of my favorite brush setups, which is uh, an 8x20. Uh, this is the Chow Lee 0820 15 kV, 15,000 kV, I should say. And I ran that with a 66 millimeter FPV racer. 
And keep in mind, this is on 1S, and these voltage readings here are the actual voltage going to the motor. Um, it's a little bit easier with the test setup to get in there and measure that. Just the way things are configured for me. Um, so the grams per watt might be a little bit more representative of the actual number um, and probably why it's a little bit higher than the others. But you can see we got less than half the thrust that we're going to see with this uh, 10,000 kV 1103 motor. Um, but again, it was 1S. Um, from a build standpoint, you're going to end up with a similar amount of weight with this type of motor if you t and compared to an 1103 with an appropriate ESC. And that's why I included this just kind of as a reference point. Um, the thrust to weight ratio on one of these 1103 builds, if you opt for a more powerful build, should be significantly higher than this. So I'm kind of interested to put it together and see how it goes. And uh, that'll be coming up in a future video.